Nutrition event with Educo Gym Live, and I'm once again joined with Martin Ford, and uh, we are going to talk about spark plugs for optimal health. So this should be a great topic. Thanks a million, Martin, for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here, Jamie. So we're gonna we're gonna crack crack into this then. So we, we were obviously we were talking beforehand, and um, really what we're going to be speaking about, we're going to touch on different vitamins and minerals. And I know you were looking at some really recent research and um, the role that it plays in COVID-19, I suppose, because it's still a topic of interest. So maybe we'll start there. Yeah, well, um, I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that a number of doctors had gotten together. This is quite an international collaboration and they have uh, outlined the way that taking vitamins and minerals, even taking vitamins and minerals in general, and help protect your immune system against the problems of uh, catching COVID. And particularly, uh, I don't know whether it quite provides a defense against catching it, but almost certainly vitamins and minerals are super going to help you if you happen to catch it and you don't get the same uh, bad side effects and you mightn't get just as sick or you mightn't get sick at all. Now, uh, I put a link, I gave you a link to this and I'd like everybody who's listening to share this as far as possible so that it goes out wide on the net, yeah? It says, uh, for a functioning immune system, it's an important factor for optimal nutritional status, to have optimal nutritional status. And they are recommending that because most people are deficient in some of the 40 essential minerals and vitamins, I mean, we've covered them in the past couple of weeks, uh, and amino acids, that a supplement, particularly for the vitamins and minerals, which are the spark plugs of nutrition, uh, can make a substantial difference. Now, I might go further and say that uh, they haven't really truly researched any link between nutrition and uh, susceptibility to bad side effects from COVID-19. There's been no real research on this. I noticed the other day the Irish government advised people to take vitamin D. Well, it's probably good advice in general, but that particular piece of research isn't, sorry, advice, is not based by actual research on COVID-19 as far as I'm aware. Uh, I'm happy that they're advising that, but I think there's an awful lot more that they could look at. For instance, Jamie, if I can just advert to the, uh, the recent uh, medical uh, catastrophe, if you like, from a, from a credibility point of view, where the Lancet and the New England Journal of Medicine had to retract papers. Uh, the papers purportedly uh, showed that hydroxychloroquine, that's the thing that Trump was taking, uh, doesn't work at all. And the, the data was not only flawed, but highly suspect. Yeah, uh, yeah it came from what a third they party. Did, Came mm -hmm. from a third party company who, um, yeah, yeah, in the US. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. But, but what they actually did, and this is a classic move to set up a straw man that they knocked down then, that uh, to show that something doesn't work, uh, what they did was omit zinc from the treatment. Now, as you know, zinc is an, a very important for your immune system. All on its own, it can make a difference to a sore throat or a. Uh, you know, whether you catch something or not, or how you respond to any kind yeah. of flu or illness. Yeah. Uh, so they omitted the zinc, almost guaranteed failure. This is how you prove things. But fortunately, they were retracted. And somebody has egg on their face as a result. Yeah, yeah, yeah a few red faces. Yeah. But the, the real truth is that the medical response to, hydro hydroxy uh, to COVID-19, whereas it's been 100% admirable in terms of the actual response in getting in and treating and the public health uh, uh, measures that have been taken. I can't praise them enough, but the actual uh, theoretical and uh, research response has been lacking. And I say that they didn't look at the nutrition. And once again, I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that many, many dark skinned uh, operatives in the health service in the UK died as a result of, of catching the infection. So the vast majority of the deaths were uh, people who had darker skin. And now 
we should be looking at vitamin D from that point of view. Yeah. But I say that the ordinary person can uh, follow a good diet, not one that will suppress the immune system. And by that, I mean uh, suppressing the immune system comes about by taking too many artificial foods, artificial fats, badly produced, uh, commercially uh, farmed chickens and other forms of meat. They tend to, in my opinion, suppress the immune system. And there's evidence yeah. for it too. Yeah. So if you stay out of those things, then you can also maybe support your immune system by taking the right kind of diet and then some supplements. For instance, we were recommending vitamin C and zinc to fortify people. And that's what you would do in the face of a viral infection. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, I think even if you look at some of the countries that really have uh, experienced very low infection rates and they didn't really maybe take the extreme measures that other countries did. And I think that's going to be the important part is researching why those countries have managed to keep infection rates so low or what was it about their population that seemed to enable them to, well, maybe not suffer as badly as other countries did in terms of the virus. The real truth is it's a mystery. Mm. And I, I, I don't know if I have the answers any more than uh, the next person. Um, but, you know, that will be sorted out in time. But what I say is that the nutritional connections, 99% of all illnesses that are dealt with in hospitals are uh, nutritional illnesses. It's just that the bad nutrition catches up with people towards the end of their lives yeah. and they end up in hospital. Yeah. Uh, that, that's 99% of all drugs are given to cover nutritional deficiencies. Now, that's a controversial one for you, Jamie. But yeah, any but natural it, it is interesting. Will agree with that. Yeah, no, it is interesting because even if you look at metabolic syndrome and uh, the way that it affects people, obviously it's a, a huge number of people that are affected by a range of diseases that are, are really curable from making different lifestyle choices, particularly with nutrition. There's a terrific study being done just at the moment. In fact, a series of studies, and it's arising originally from the UK, where they're looking at how down to the individual meal foods affect individual people. And they find that uh, there's a pattern that for you or for me or for anyone that's listening, they'll have an individual pattern of response to the meals. Now, back in the day, maybe 20 or 30 years ago, the pioneers of vitamin therapy called that biochemical individuality. Now it's been proven, in fact, it's been proven to an amazing extent that one person can have a totally different reaction to a certain meal than the next person. And that's wow. consistent with them. So it's to do with their individuality. Now, there are certain things, and I should say to you, there are certain fundamentals in nutrition that if you look after them, then it applies to the vast majority of people. We're not running into too much biochemical individuality. As, as an example, you've got the mineral requirements. Now, Jamie, I'd like to tell you about uh, uh, a patient I dealt with during the week. It was a phone call, a very brief phone call, where, yeah. the, where uh, my friend outlined the nature of this problem and said that the person in charge of the individual who was sick had a whole big long list, very sophisticated list of different supplements they were thinking of giving them. And I said, look, this complication, nobody can know which of those or if any of those are gonna help the person but there are fundamentals that will help the person. So I advise the person on fundamentals, which yeah. is very simple, probably about three items to take, two, three products to take to help in the situation. So if you can think in terms of the fundamentals and understand the fundamentals, you can overcome, again, a very, very large proportion of all the problems. Yeah. So we, talk, we talked at the beginning about uh, spark plugs. So maybe just explain what, what we're actually referring to and why, why you might call them spark plugs when we're, we're looking at- maybe well, To illustrate the, 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 the way that vitamins and minerals work, you can think of them as spark plugs. Nothing works without them. They spark it all off. And minerals are particular, which is what I was thinking of talking about today, minerals. Minerals are particularly interesting because they, can control the acid-base balance of the body. 
And under certain circumstances, if you get too much to the acid side, you can get various problems. And it, it, it can happen that you get too much to the alkaline side, though that's somewhat less common of a problem. The secret lies in the balance of the minerals. If we were to go back to uh, the matter of zinc and uh, the fact that they omitted it from the research and the fact that many people use zinc to fortify their immune system. In fact, zinc has these, these brilliant effects. Oh my God, all on its own. It can lift your mental state, help you think better, uh, take you out of depression. If you run low on zinc, you'll probably get depressed. And that can happen in a few days. Uh, the general surveys for nutrition show that most people don't get enough zinc. There's a certain RDA set for zinc. Uh, and uh, The surveys show that people don't reach it. Now, there's a problem here with this. The surveys show what people are taking in, but they don't account for the fact that there's many, many zinc rubbers in the diet. Yeah. So many, the zinc many, rubbers. Many foods right? block it. Yeah. So if zinc... If zinc affects your brain, right, this is like stripping the zinc from your roof, right? So the zinc rubbers are things like tea, coffee, alcohol, even fizzy beverages of any kind. Uh, even too much calcium can be a zinc rubber. So, you know, the mineral balance comes into this in a big way. And especially for one of the, the topics that we're, we're very keen to help people with in the Duke gym area, their joints. Yeah. When it comes to that, most, most joint problems are related to calcium deposits in some form or another. That's right. And, and you were saying that uh, the health of your joints is a very good indication to your overall health. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, if you consider that, you know, heart disease has been linked to calcium deposits. If you're getting calcium deposits in your joints, then that's not such a great idea. In fact, you know, brain deterioration has been linked to calcium deposits as well. A lack of flexibility in the arteries. You know, that brings in our friend nitric oxide and the possible use of nitric oxide foods and supplements like Nova. Uh, but if you lose the general flexibility of the body due to calcium deposits, then it's going to affect every tissue in your body. You know, how many people suffer from gallbladder problems that are due to calcium stones? a large number and that happens in the mid 40s so it's not such a, a terrific sign if you're suffering from that it means that the calcium metabolism is not right in some form or another so how would you improve that martin yeah well what you try to do is balance out the minerals yeah so yeah uh, the most common fault I find with people's diets, where the, particularly where there are pains and aches in the diet, is a lack of calcium, just a lack of calcium. Yeah. And people can have uh, a diet based on a large amount of ready type carbohydrates, and they may have a, 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 you know, with that, they'll have meat or fish or whatever, they have eggs and all the rest of it. They, those foods would, would not be very high in calcium, but it's very common to run across a complete uh, uh, well, a rather low level of calcium in the diet. Now, that is one of the things that's easiest to correct. So there's a couple of ways. Obviously, you can take a calcium supplement if that's what you want to do. If you think you can drink milk or take yogurt, well, that's another way of doing it. Yeah, because even though uh, if you look on the internet, there, there are sites that will tell you there's absolutely no calcium in any of those things. This is just not true. It's available calcium that we have to consider and whether we're absorbing the calcium proper, properly. But in an emergency, they certainly do provide calcium if you can digest them. Now, a lot of the time, uh, the optimal type of calcium to choose is anything that's protein bound. Protein bound calcium is absorbed into the system best and casein bound calcium is the best of all. Why? Because casein tends to form the very tissues your joints are made of the connective okay. tissues. So, uh, you know, you, you often recommend proteins, which are, are calcium based proteins, calcium and casein yeah. Yeah. in the gyms. And yeah. when people take those, if you say took one portion of those a day, yes, you have it there, the Proform 100. Uh, when you take a portion of that a day, you increase your calcium uh, intake 
And the safe calcium intake is something like three times the normal calcium intake, roughly. So you don't run into problems with this unless you take kind of half the tub in one go <laughs> uh, for several days in a, uh, in a row. Now, of course, some bodybuilders might choose to do that, in which case there's ways of dealing with it. But for the ordinary person, one portion of that a day will increase the calcium uh, intake sufficient. Now, the, the real problem with a low calcium intake, the real problem with that, and it affects uh, half the population, uh, and it's particularly problematic for women because men don't, men get the arthritis, pains and aches side of it, but they don't get the bone weakening side of it. With women, they can get the bone weakening side of it. Right. So women can benefit from something that helps hold the calcium in the system, provide more calcium and build up the connective tissue that bones are made of. Yeah. Um, so you would increase the amount of calcium available. Now, if you just did that, you probably don't need anything else. If you eat fruits and vegetables and that with that, that probably balances it out. If you were to take a little bit more of that protein, then you probably would be wise to balance it out with some magnesium. Yeah. Because that's the primary balance in the minerals, calcium and magnesium. If you want to go further than that, then you could take a little bit of zinc to balance it all out. But most right. people will be taking maybe... The majority of people probably take some kind of a meat meal or a fish meal, and that provides zinc, sufficient anyway for us to be getting on with. Not quite enough to support your immune system many times, but when we're looking at this overall calcium, magnesium, zinc balance, then you may not have to take too many extra steps. If uh, you want to and go vitamin down D, the just to, just to hmm? say that vitamin D important for the absorption of calcium? No, completely. Uh, I, I was going to mention... Uh, uh, the idea of uh, a calcium supplement, right? If we want a calcium supplement, then it should be a supplement that is in the right form, is accompanied by magnesium and zinc, and also contains vitamin D and vitamin K. Now with vitamin D, we have to be a little bit careful. There's a wide range of safety in regard to vitamin D. But the trouble is that the calcification, the calcification that can be caused by huge doses of vitamin C is insidious Vit and hard D. to get rid of. Hmm? By large doses of vitamin D. Vitamin D, yeah. yeah. In other words, beyond 3,000 international units or 75 yeah. micrograms. Go beyond that consistently. Uh, you could be running into a problem that you don't even know about till it happens. Yeah. Because the kidneys and the brain, they're all susceptible to, to insidious calcification, yeah? So I would advise that if you're taking vitamin D, maybe take 1,000 international units or 2,000. For instance, in our cell rejuvenation mix product, we have 2,000 international yeah. units. And that is a foundation, keeps you going, yeah? yeah. yeah. But the vitamin D should be accompanied by vitamin K because vitamin K works, vitamin K2, Vitamin K2 works to make sure the calcium goes into your bones and not into your soft tissues, but you don't want it. And that applies to your heart. It applies to your, your organs and glands, your gallbladder and your uh, joints in general. Okay. Okay, great. So, so if a person was slightly lacking in calcium, they would notice what conditions. We've obviously mentioned a few of the aches and pains, maybe bone weakening, so those the most recent generally... one that I came came across was actually somebody that uh, somebody that asked me about pains in their knees. So at a very very quick examination of their diet, I mean just a verbal consultation, uh, I suggested to them to take some calcium bearing protein, and that wrapped up the problem with their knees. Wrapped it up. Calcium, magnesium. Now for the joint pains, not so much zinc but calcium and magnesium. Interestingly, zinc does have a role in terms of the heart. Zinc is known to help prevent or to ameliorate angina. So the pain that occurs from the heart's not being flexible enough to accommodate a higher amount of uh, blood output uh, can be ameliorated by zinc. Okay. So all these minerals work together on, on the calcium metabolism, if you like. But vitamin K, any, any good supplement of, uh, of calcium, magnesium, and zinc should also include vitamin K. We have that nighttime formula. 
well, that's a, a legacy name because if you take it at night, it makes you very, very relaxed and helps you sleep. Yeah. And you absorb the calcium and magnesium very well at night also. But that is one way. In fact, that's a really good way of for the ladies in particular to make sure that their bones uh, hold on to as much calcium as possible. But remember, ladies, you do need protein as well. Your bones are not made of calcium. They're made of protein. Yeah. And if without the protein, they get thin. Without the protein, there's nothing for the calcium to stick into. Okay, that's a really good point. So then we're, we're so two topics then we're, we're looking to cover. So first of all, maybe explain a little bit about the importance of flexibility. Well, flexibility is a, an indicator, yeah? You don't have to be a yogi, but the yogis knew that if you were flexible, that it opened out all the channels in the body. They talked about the, what was it, the 72,000 nadis in the body, yeah? And now we're talking about the spaces in between the cells. Remember our conversation on that? Yeah. And we're talking about the circulation, the fluids, not in the blood, not in the lymph, uh, not within the cells, but between the cells. Yeah. And so the yogis knew about this and they practiced flexibility because that helped open it all up. And they believed that that would make a dramatic difference to your health and particularly your, the rate at which you would age. They, they also believed that it made a difference to your awareness, by the way, Jane, Jamie. Okay. Uh, they, you know, I mean, th these exercises were practiced to put pressure on different glands in the body, yeah. but also to open up the circulation to those glands. When all those glands are functioning perfectly, then life itself can be expressed to its fullness through you and you become a much more energetic dynamic uh, inspir inspired type of person and you'll speak from a different level you'll speak from maybe you might be able to tap into this universal level that's the life force itself you see that's what the yogis used to think so the flexibility must be interpreted in 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 the overall picture that i'm giving you there yeah. Yeah. So, so flexibility so how, then opens yeah. the body to all of this. So how do we ensure flexibility? We've talked about it. It's, well, it, it's really making sure you absorb calcium correctly. Is that that really yeah, the crux well, of I mean, it? The, the extreme, the extreme is where. Uh, let me give you an example. Yes, I I, I talked about a, a, a patient I had who who was congratulated by his uh, physio on how much his hips had improved because he was slated for a, a, a hip replacement. And I can think of, uh, I can think of this, this groundsman that uh, came to see me a, a couple of years ago, clutching his MRI scan and how he had to go and get a hip operation. And uh, looking at him, he couldn't even lie down straight on the plinth. His hip was so impaired that he had a lot of pain even trying to lie down straight. Wow. And uh, you know, a couple of months on the program that I'm talking about, I'm actually giving you the cure here, a couple of months on that, and the man is back at his job, right. working as a groundsman. So he, so, he simply you know, increased calcium, Martin, is that uh, right? No, hold on. It's, we need to increase it in balance. We yeah. need to make sure there's adequate calcium, the right level. Balance uh, if, we can, if we can include vitamin D and vitamin K as well, say cell rejuvenation mix provides. And if you, uh, if you can make sure there's magnesium present as well, yeah. they're the, probably the, the, after that, then you would use the fish oils because fish oils control the inflammatory response and uh, a calcium deposit can only cause problems if it causes the inflammatory response. Well, to a certain extent, uh, to be fair, it, it can grow to be an actual physical obstacle uh, but that would be less usual. It's more, much more usual that the calcium crystals cause the inflammatory response, all the pain and the lack of function. Okay. And that's just any natural that's fascinating. That. So then when we're just, just so we touch on it briefly, is there anything that we need to know about mineral water, drinking water, or, and also maybe the types of calcium that we should possibly avoid? What, what a good question. But first, before we go into uh, the mineral water and all that, I'll just say that if you lack calcium, you can end up having a lot of calcium deposits. That's a, a kind of an overreaction on the body. It pulls a lot of calcium into your system, out of your bones. Okay. And it yeah. puts it into your into where you don't want it. So just be careful of that one. Now, in regard to mineral waters and that type of thing, 
yeah, all very nice and all the rest of it. But the majority of them have the wrong kind of calcium. If you look at your mineral water, check to see if you want to take mineral water, even if you're in a restaurant, see whether it has high calcium and low magnesium or high magnesium and almost no calcium. Now, if it has high magnesium and almost no calcium, you can probably take that. But there are other minerals in that that may or may not be suitable. The best of all is uh, for drinking is distilled water. So there's no minerals at all in that. And it's very gentle on the system. Not only that, but it picks up the minerals in your food and draw, draws them into your system very mm -hmm. effectively. Okay, so that just so that we're explaining it to its fullest extent, we're talking about organic minerals versus inorganic minerals, right? Yeah, or no minerals at all, which is what we're talking about in, yeah. in terms of... So in terms yeah. of water, though, in terms of the type of calcium that we're trying to avoid, we're trying to avoid Oh, yes, inorganic yeah, I, I understand, Jamie. Yeah. Yes, uh, the, the majority, all mineral waters have either calcium carbonate or calcium sulfate in them. Calcium carbonate and sulfate are, you can think of them in terms of acid forms of calcium that don't work. Calcium carbonate in particular uh, is not suitable because it lends itself to this calcification process, in particular for the heart and circulatory system. Uh, calcium sulfate is plaster of Paris and it too has that hardening effect on the body. Yeah. For calcium, you need calcium in, in a more organic form. Yeah. And calcium that comes in vegetables and in fruits, it, it comes in any kind of green vegetable will have calcium. But you'd have to take maybe five or six portions of green vegetables a day to get your calcium. And most people don't do that. Yeah. So therefore, uh, another excellent source of calcium is any kind of dairy product. You don't have to take the fat. You can, you can take a fat-free dairy product. So any dairy product uh, will normally provide substantial amounts of calcium. Mm. But remember, uh, people who take lots and lots of dairy products may not have a balanced diet. They may not have the magnesium. They may not have the zinc. So we have to be a little bit knowledgeable about this. Sure. Yeah, and, and the ratio of calcium to magnesium, two to one. The RDA, what, 800 Yeah, or even calcium. one to one. I and mean, if you eat an orange, you get one to one. Okay. Yeah, and that's, that's beneficial. Um, so a higher level of, of magnesium is worth considering. It makes a big, big difference. Magnesium on its own can make all the difference to somebody who's suffering from pains and aches. Give you an example. Uh, an older man whose neck is very, very stiff and causing all these pains up into his head. It's a very distressing condition. I mean, it's super sore. Try magnesium. Even just one or two magnesiums can make such a difference. So it's, that's it's, it's, all, yeah, it's, it's also worth touching on um, digestive problems because uh, a lot of people that we would see that we do consultations with would often suffer from constipation. So it's important. I think people maybe don't talk about it a lot for obvious reasons. So what's the regular number of bowel movements per day and how does magnesium contribute to, to healthy bowel movements? <laughs> Back in the day, uh, as far as I remember, uh, uh, a man called Emile Coué wrote a book called, uh, well, it was about uh, controlling your mind. It was about controlling your life, indeed, by what you tell yourself. And he had a, uh, he had a, a daily routine for what you said to yourself, right. right, which included that you'd have a really good bowel movement every day. This was back in the 20s, right? And they liked that type of thing, right? We haven't progressed very much. We still should have one really good one every day, right? Yeah. And uh, that Minimum. can, you know, magnesium does help keep you regular. We put it that way. Calcium tends to constipate you and magnesium can, can uh, counteract, does counteract that. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, it's just to try and give people maybe some idea if they they decide to go all in for getting more calcium, just to make sure that they can spot the signs that maybe they're not getting it in, in the right balance with magnesium. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, um, but magnesium does much more than that, Jamie. Magnesium should not be ignored. Magnesium oh, opens up mineral. the circulation. Hmm? It's my favorite mineral. The, the benefits oh, of magnesium right. are incredible. Well, it opens up the circulation all over your body for a start. Yeah. It actually opens up your circulation. It's amazing. Even magnesium on its own can make you warm if you're a cold person. Yeah. 
uh, it improves your circulation, as I say, all over. And uh, it has this electric effect on your nervous system. It activates your nervous system, right? So magnesium has a relaxing effect on the nervous system. Sometimes if you take too much magnesium, which mightn't be too much nutritionally, it's just a lot of magnesium in one go, it can make you sleepy. So it's very good at night. But uh, the counter effect of it is to activate you and energize you. I mean, there's great research on this showing that a lack of energy is connected to a lack of magnesium, just wow. straight up. Yeah, and, and the and magnesium, mean, uh, magnesium is another of these minerals, these alkaline minerals that are subject to, to the, uh, to the rubbers. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, you remember the, the zinc rubbers that would take take it off your roof, right, and leave your brain without zinc, so you can't think. Zinc helps you think, right? Magnesium helps you think as well. Magnesium gives you energy. Yeah. So it's worth probably it just. It's probably worth just talking about it because when we're dealing with magnesium, calcium, zinc, we're obviously talking about alkaline minerals. So maybe you touch on the importance of having an, uh, the acid alkaline balance and, and how that actually works in the body because people often yeah. talk a lot about being too acid or too alkaline, mainly too acid people really talk about, but maybe you talk about the benefits of uh, either way. Okay. People talk about being too acid and people... Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's really only a matter of getting your calcium, magnesium, and zinc in, in sufficiency, right? Uh, potassium comes from ve vegetables and fruits. So if you include those in your diet, your energy can go down quite a bit if you don't have enough potassium. So make sure to include vegetables and fruits in your diet. And if you boil the vegetables, you tend to lose the, the potassium. So you can steam the vegetables instead. That would be good. But having said all that, then that gives you a certain amount of alkalinity to play with. The biggest alkaline player is probably the calcium yeah. because most people really go low in calcium from time to time uh, unless they're on somewhat unusual diets. In, uh, so if you can keep the calcium in balance with the others, then you probably won't have too much acid and alkaline problems, if you want to put it that way. Um, so what would calcium. be the what, oh what yeah would be, what i was going to hmm? yeah no i was just going to say what what um what would indicate that a person maybe has become too acid and what 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 can happen i mean obviously you think of acid as corrosive so how does that affect the the body's health and what conditions it, it are... affects different body tissues in different ways but uh you know it affects your joints it's going to cause deterioration of your joints yeah you lose the uh, clear collagen substance that's normally in your joints and that get that cracks and splits and becomes thinned out so you don't want that by the way all of that can regenerate i mean you've got glucosamine we have a great product called a right b right and it's such a consistent popular product with people because we always get people ringing up saying i take this every month and i've never had a pain and ache in years yeah. And it's not calcium based, by the way, it's more based on controlling your immune response in the yeah. overall picture of the whole diet. But it does contain glucosamine and chondroitin, which are very, very helpful to build up the joints again. Yeah. yeah. So if that's for people who have a problem. And that alone can cause the resolution of a lot of these joint problems. Yeah. But uh, you see, that can be effective then without worrying too much about your acid and alkaline. People will say, oh, I must be alkaline, and they'll eat a diet mainly based on fruits and vegetables, and they can even feed their children on this kind of a diet. And it may be, sadly, for them and for their family, deficient in protein, possibly in calcium too, because if they avoid dairy products, where are they going to get their calcium? And they don't. And that's just the fact. Yeah. So it would be a, a, a labor of love to set up a diet for a family which didn't include the daily dairy products that's provided sufficient calcium. Not impossible, but rare. And in fact, we see problems arising out of that all the time. 
Yeah, well, it's interesting because if you address the alkaline minerals and you take them in sufficient quantities with anything else that's necessary to help you to absorb them, I mean, you notice such a difference in skin, hair, nails, energy. I mean, it really, your whole appearance is affected by these minerals. It's really worth making sure that, I, I think that so. you get them. I yeah. think so. If you can, one of the f things about being more alkaline is that if your system is rather more alkaline, you'll hold on to protein better. Yeah. Now we're back to protein retention and whether you can use your amino acids. That's one of the reasons that a combination of protein with calcium, such as we have in the, in the Proform, the protein powders, that's one of the reasons the protein powders work very well for just what you're saying. In other words, your appearance, because they help form collagen underneath your skin to help build your skin as well as building bones. And they have this, it, it has this peculiar effect on your whole system. If you can digest it well, and I hope you can, if you can digest it well, it has this very good regulating effect on your whole body. Your digestion should come around to normal with it. Now I recognize that yeah, not absolutely everybody can take advantage of this. But if you can, you should. Brilliant. Okay, so we thought that we would cover maybe one of the essential acid minerals. And uh, so I want to touch briefly on iodine and the importance of iodine and the oh. role it plays in the body. Yes, a couple, of weeks ago, we, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the problem of low thyroid. It affects a large number of middle-aged women. And it's normal for, for the doctor to prescribe uh, thyroid, a thyroid substitute. Um, now, obviously the action of the thyroid gland can vary. In other words, it can be more or less, yeah. but in general, it has to be said that there's always a proportion of the population are going to be low in iodine. Now, if you buy ordinary salt, if you buy sea salt, and if you buy Himalayan salt, it won't have iodine added. Okay. My advice to you would be to take something that had iodine like seaweed. You can eat some seaweed in your diet. Uh, ordinary salt may have iodine added. And that's a, that's a good thing because in countries where they neglect to do that, then they can have problems with low iodine. For instance, in the north of Paris, they surveyed pregnant women in all the hospitals and found that a, a massively high proportion of them were low in iodine. Wow. Now, if you know nutrition, then you'll realize the serious importance of that. And those children may not be optimal in their intellectual capacity when they're born. Mm. You cannot afford to be low in iodine when you're pregnant. Yeah. So ladies, you have to consider that. It's not much of a problem in Ireland, but for some people, it will be a problem. So some kind of iodine containing food. And did you know, by the way, that the two best sources of iodine in the diet, in, in the ordinary diet in Ireland are milk and meat. Wow. Milk in particular. Wow. I didn't actually, I didn't know that. I knew yeah. about meat. No, mi milk dairy products incredible. are pro-thyroid. Okay. Yeah. And there are certain... one of the reasons that people, people's appearance can improve when they take dairy products. Okay. Wow. All right. And so the other, the other, so you're, you're talking about obviously the role and function of the thyroid. So it has a role in regulating a person's metabolism. So particularly as ladies maybe get into their forties uh, and fifties, middle age, that they, and, and am I right in saying that if you get a blood test, you could be quite low uh, your reading could be quite low, but it would be within the, the correct range. But it's definitely getting from a nutritional point of view, it's getting on the low side and it's worth, yeah. it's worth doing something about it. Naturopathic, naturopathic doctors will recognize that underreported hypothyroidism is a problem. Okay. You, you, Underrecognized. Your microphone has just gone a bit haywire there, a tiny bit. I see. All right. All right. Are, you, are you able to hear me now? It's just, it's um, coming through tiny bit garbled. Just try that again, Martin. How are we doing now? Switch to the app. Okay, go for it. How are we doing now? 
Yeah, no, it's still still not, not wonderful. So much. And, and now we just switch to uh, uh, ambience. Things. Okay. So it'll be a little bit echoey, but is that yeah. okay? It's yeah. much better. Yeah, yeah. No, what I'm saying is that in in regard to uh, in regard to hypothyroid, then um, yeah, no, it's it's there's a lot of discussion about slightly low thyroid and at what level should an intervention be made. Yeah. So the suppression of thyroid action will slow your mind and make you apathetic. It's hard to get going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's one of the first symptoms of it. And then weight gain comes into it. And we talked about the importance of L tyrosine last week in amino acids. It's worth probably just mentioning just because yeah, tyrosine, tyrosine has, has a very supportive effect on the thyroid. Not only that, it also makes up very important neurotransmitters in your brain, including dopamine. Dopamine is what gives you an interest in life and gets you started, gets you going. Uh, the thyroid makes it possible for you to go. So if you were to take extra tyrosine in your diet, and the majority of older people, like over 40, probably need it. Okay. Some extra tyrosine, usually you would take this as a supplement, so like the Mind Focus product. When you take it, and you take it on its own so the tyrosine can really work, it'll pick up any available iodine in your body and it makes sure that your thyroid gland is fully functional. Oh, brilliant. It, that's brilliant. Once, once the thyroid gland is capable of, of picking it up, yeah? And in the majority of cases of slightly low sluggish thyroid, then uh, it should be capable. So the tyrosine and then a diet that includes maybe some feet, some seafood, a tiny bit of seaweed type of thing. You only need very small amounts of iodine. Like kelp tablets or dulse or something like that. Even that might be too much. But some dulse would be good or, yeah, I, you know, but, you know, for the ordinary person, dairy products provide. Yeah, yeah. The ordinary diet in Ireland can provide. So just uh, the thyroid, what role does that play in terms of fighting infection? Does the thyroid play a role in that? Well, because it controls every tissue in your body, then uh, it will play a role in that. But people who are on, on thyroid therapy probably are not in a worse position. The danger is that with, with a low thyroid is that the whole circulation becomes very sluggish. Yeah. The tissues thicken. The in between the cells thickens so that the responses in every respect can be, can be low. It's not always possible for the doctors with their best efforts to hit the right sweet spot with thyroid therapy. So those who suffer from this will know what I'm talking about. Uh, but you can help yourself with, you know, even if you're on a medication and you shouldn't go off the medication, but even if you're on a medication, the general advice that we would give is do exercise, make sure you have enough amino acids in your diet. The amino energizer is such a convenient way of getting the amino acids in, probably for most again, back to the women, uh, a better way than they normally will approach meat because they may not like meat. You know, we were faced with people who may not like meat yeah. and uh, only take small amounts of it. So some amino acids as a supplement can make a big difference. Okay, brilliant. So I'm just, um, is there anything else then, Martin, before we wrap up? I, I noticed a, a question somebody was just asking about, can people, can they take glucosamine with bio oils? But I they, think should. Say, yes, they should. Yes, they should. Not only can yeah. they, but they should. Yeah, that's from John. Thanks for that, John. Yes. Um, yes. I've been trying to keep an eye on the comments, but they suddenly disappear out of my feed. So um, I can't get to all of them, but we will respond to anybody who has any questions following watching the video. Please do leave it in the uh, feed. And uh, can you talk about the benefits of bicarbonate of soda for arthritis, Martin? Well, bicarbonate of soda is a very uh, quick and easy way to alkalize yourself. It's absolutely wonderful for urinary tract infections, by the way. Uh, but in regard to arthritis, anything that makes you alkaline tends to be helpful from that point of view. Okay. Yeah, but. 
again, I don't know because that can, it's good, but it can somewhat upset your digestive tract. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. although it provides sodium, sodium is actually very, very good for your joints. It's not a comprehensive approach. Okay. Um, um, I remember to alkalize the system, parsley, parsley can be very effective. It's very high in calcium. Isn't that correct? And good magnesium, I imagine. What was the first one you mentioned? Parsley, a very oh, good parsley. source. Yeah. Oh, parsley. Well, parsley is is a, a terrific green vegetable. It does contain phytic acid that uh, can reduce your calcium absorption. But yes, you know, it's it, it's a very potent and very powerful green vegetable. Yeah, put it into your diet immediately. Yeah. Okay. So you Grace, can cook uh, parsley. It's a delicious uh, vegetable cooked, by the way, and very inexpensive. And you don't have to eat the stalks; just eat the leaves. Yeah. And now that will be a source of calcium for you, for sure. Okay, great. So um, I think that's everything that uh, that we wanted to cover today. Was there anything else, Martin? Um... Well, of course there is, and we'll talk about it again. Again, <laughs> I'd like to like people to understand the importance of uh, being anabolic. And I do think that uh, the right uh, mineral balance is going to help you on that. As I said, if you if you have a more alkaline system, that helps you retain protein. You don't yeah. disappear as you get older. Yeah? yeah. Even people people don't just disappear. They disappear inside their fat. You, you know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they kind of they they shrink inside their their somewhat deteriorated tissues. So we don't want that to happen, you know? So you have to come out and express your life force. Yeah. All yeah. of the things we're talking about are geared towards that. And by the way, Jane, uh, Jane, I'm going to return to the idea of the fundamentals. Yeah. Get the fundamentals right because there's a lot of fancy ideas out there as to what's going to be good. There are very expensive supplements to support maybe glutathione or something like that. Uh, if you do the fundamentals, the body will make its own glutathione. Yeah. You know. So I'm not I'm not decrying any particular supplements or, or approaches, but I do suggest that we get the fundamentals right. That's been brilliant, Martin. We, we once again, we really appreciate it. We've had so many people watch the videos from the, the last two weeks. So thank you so much for taking the time again to join us and to discuss all things nutrition. And we'll continue to uh, do this, I think, on a weekly basis because I, I, it's just providing so much benefit. So Martin, thank you so much once again. Really, I'm, really off, I'm off to do my squats now. Okay, great. Growth hormone. Yeah, super. Okay, thanks very much. And for everybody See watching, you thank you so much. And if there's a topic that you would like Martin to cover that you'd like us to discuss, please do let us know. You can either send it by direct message or you can leave it on our feed and we will address it in time. Obviously, if you have something that you'd like to ask us, please do put it under the, under the video and uh, we'll respond in due course. And thank you once again for joining us. And we look forward to either seeing you at one of our other events on a daily basis or we will see you next Wednesday for more nutrition. Thank you so much for joining us. Cheers. Bye. Bye.